In this episode of Negative Modifier, we'll be playing the game Delta Green. Delta Green, by design, tackles various mature themes that may be uncomfortable or triggering for listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Hey, it's Charlie, Negative Modifier's Game Master. First off, thank you for giving us a listen. As always, expect something horrible to happen to the players. If you're a fan, support us by leaving a review on iTunes. If you hate the show, consider doing it anyway and enjoying the fact that you've inflicted us on someone else. For the most up-to-date news on the podcast, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And with that... So we're going to do part of the CDC stuff first. We'll kind of bounce back and forth between the two for a little bit. All right, so yeah, you, sure. you, you arrive. Nothing bad happens. The samples are indeed waiting for you. The samples are an interesting bag. So someone has removed what looks like a lung, maybe the liver, and there's a collection of blood samples. Uh, grisliest amongst samples, though, is it looks like someone just kind of took a rough chunk out of the someone's neck, basically. Like, they basically kind of cut a sample out of the body, almost like a butcher cut of some kind from slightly below kind of where the skull and the spine meet to about five or six inches down. So it's almost like it's almost the person's entire neck they've given you. They've packaged it up in some ice and it's kind of wrapped. Fantastic. All right. Um, Yeah. Uh, Nephily will get a lab and uh, start start examining the uh, samples. All right, cool. What are you looking for, I guess? Like what what tests are you running? Is it going to be um I think that it's going to see if uh I mean there are any like pathogens that are still alive in the blood or any of these samples and how it reacts to various stimulants. Um, sure. I don't know the exact type of thing that you do for this kind of testing, but No, yeah, no, but slicing kind of looking for activity and so that doesn't yeah. have, like a great place to start. Yeah. All right, so while you're trying to prepare the samples, you notice one thing. All the organs are, it's like cutting frozen meat almost. Like something's happening or ha- is happening or happened that caused the tissue to kind of solidify in some ways. Like it's not totally solid, but it's got kind of a crunch to it it definitely shouldn't have. And there's not a lot of things that would make an organ go crunchy, decay, liquidy. Like all those are more things that happen to organs, but hard and crunchy. Not so much aside for cooking it. It's not cooked. It's still very kind of raw-ish, but that's all weird unto itself. Yeah. That's pretty strange. Um, She'll also uh, um, examine some of the cells of the um, of the the organs. uh, Get really into it and see if there's anything weird going on with those. Yeah. Let's do some checks for that. Um, what are your sciences again? Uh, microbiology at 90%, genetics at 50 and biology at 50 Let's start with the biology, actually. 30 success. 30 out of 50. Excellent. Yeah, so you, you immediately notice that like what's happening to these organs, it's not... This is not a normal process, I guess. Like Things don't decay like this. This isn't how anything works when it comes to decomposition or dead bodies. And the more you're kind of handling it, the kind of you're looking through some slides at it, it's almost like this thing's turning into amber. Like it's not, it's not like tree sap amber, but it's got kind of that same crystalline quality of something that was an organic liquid that's slowly turning into a hard resin-like material. Like a, resin's probably a better word than amber necessarily, but it's, it is getting harder with each passing second. Very slowly in the process, definitely seems to have slowed down, but given enough time, the organs you have would kind of be rendered, maybe not rock hard, but definitely into a full solid. Um, can she attempt to find a way to halt the process or yeah, slow absolutely. it down even more? Yeah, and that'll probably take some time okay. to do that along with that. Uh, what are you doing while all this is going on, Agent Foxtrot? I'm just sitting around waiting for uh, Florence to do her thing. I'm not really a science guy, so I, uh, I'm i just kind of there to make sure nobody tries any funny business while she does her work. Well, so and I guess, like, based on your character, might I recommend you're at the CDC. Mm. If there is weird stuff going mm. on, Someone might be talking about it. It might be okay. worth kind of sloop. It might be worth kind of sneaking around some, or just eavesdropping a little bit, or 
bouncing around some incognito to kind of see if anyone's talking about anything strange happening. What time of day is this, by the way? Uh, what time of year? No, what time of day? Like, is it the morning, like afternoon? Because I know we went to our motel rooms and we had met up, but like, I don't remember. It's slightly it's into the afternoon, time. I think. Like, we'll say like oh. one, two o'clock, probably. Okay. Um. Hmm. Okay. I mean, I can, I can kind of do a nice, like, looking around of the where we actually are, the room that we're in at the moment, see if there's anybody else nearby. But yeah. There's... I'm assuming Florence did a whole private lab given the sensitive nature of what you're investigating. Okay. Is that true? Or I, I'm not putting words yes. in your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. She so probably have to kind of go out and maybe talk to the janitorial staff or something. Okay. Then yeah, yeah I'll, uh, I'll go find, go find somebody to talk to then. All right. All right. Cool. Yeah, so give me a search at plus 20 on that one. Search plus 20? All right. Yeah, so uh, you're kind of wandering around some, just kind of looking incognito, uh, very kind of inconspicuous, and you find a group of kind of lab assistants. They're not full-time CDC employees, maybe why they're talking about this, and they're kind of like talking about the fact that it's, it's not the Zika virus, but there's been several reports of a strange mostly benign West Nile Zika, like they're suspecting it's being transmitted by a uh, mosquito of some kind or some type of insect disease showing up at the hospitals. It doesn't seem to hurt anyone. It's not like contagious or anything like that, but it is a thing that people are showing up in people and it is kind of, it dies off pretty quickly. It almost has like a, it's weird though. Cause it seems to be like, it seems to have like a remnant of a venom. It shows up as kind of like a poisoning in people. So again, like maybe they feel sleepy for a couple of days or a little bit sick, but it's not dangerous to someone full size or they're kind of in that it's healthy already. Okay. Yeah. So you hear about that. I'm going to jump over though, to reaching hands. So reaching hands operates out of a uh, homeless, kind of a homeless community or a homeless shelter, I guess is more probably the more correct term for it. It's the uh, white crest, uh, I have homeless shelter. They operate kind of in the basement. They have three, we'll call it offices to be generous, but they're more just kind of rooms. They stuck some doors and temporary walls up inside of to make some space. There's kind of a main staging area where they have a large conference table. And by that, I mean like four or five ping pong tables. They've Mm -hmm. attached together to make a large table. They can lay stuff out on. And then a couple kind of seating areas for people to volunteer at. And, Two doors. One of them appears to be like one of them's marked storage, and the other one is marked Polly Gear. Any investigation you want to do as you walk into the shelter, or no? You said one of the doors was called Polly Gear. 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 Polly Gear. Okay. Cool. cool. Um, is there anyone around? Uh, where we're standing? Are we like outside right now? Or I assume you're inside, but yeah, you can be outside if you want. Yeah, outside the building's fine. Yeah, it's. A nice enough building, like it's brick, it's industrial, it's converted over to a homeless shelter kind of thing. It's not an amazing building, but it's been well kept up. Someone's put some money into this, it seems. Gotcha. Uh, Francis, do we have a cover story outside of, I was thinking, uh, working with the Los Angeles Diocese as a kind of aid or just whatever have you, I'll just introduce you as my associate. Well, um, since I'm actually a federal marshal and I, I have real jurisdiction, uh, not saying you don't, of course, but um, gotcha. my, <laughs> my the cover story I wanted to go with was um, that where that this uh, increase in homeless disappearances was linked to a uh, sort of a, a, a larger nationwide string perhaps like a like an inner like a like a cross state operation or you know sort of a serial murderer d- kidnapper gotcha gotcha um and if anything else i am i could always just say that i'm a grief counselor uh so cool perfect shall we yeah all right so we're going inside we walk into the building all right, so there is kind of a sign that does direct you to go downstairs into the basement area to get to reaching hands. But as you're walking through, it's the middle of the day, so they're kind of the shelter is closed for most people. Like they're outside or they're out kind of out throughout the city at this point. There's a few people inside that either need more medical attention or 
maybe aren't totally mentally fit to be easily discharged or something like that. And give me an alertness as you walk through. Oh, dude! I just uh, before before we do that, I just looked at my notes and realized that Polly Gare is the person who runs Helping Helping Hands. Yep. God damn, my finger was covering. It. Embarrassing. I, I let him. I, um, I let Chad know that. All right. Oh, perfect. Alertness. I succeed. Oh nope, that's not. I failed. I succeeded with a sixty-three, just barely <laughs> passing. Just barely passing on that alert check. Agent Francis, the ever alert with a failure on this one. Wow. I'm distracted by the door, okay? Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, so as you're walking through, you hear one especially kind of unhinged resident, uh, appears to be male, kind of just repeating over and over themselves the buzzing. The buzzing is the worst thing you can hear. And it's, it's kind of like it's 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 the mumbling of a crazy person, but he's very upset about this buzzing. But I'm assuming you go downstairs from there? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't yes. see any reason to, to ask a homeless person. Yeah. All right, cool. So, yeah, you get downstairs. It's uh, boring enough, kind of temporary or makeshift office space. As I mentioned, there's the tables down there. They're kind of put together. There's some seating, and there's the two doors, one marked storage and one marked poly gear. No one appears to be kind of down here at this exact point in time. Are you going to wait? you going to knock on the door? Yeah, I'll knock on the door to poly gear. Unless, unless, you know, Faust wants me to do something else. No, I think knocking on the door is going to be fine. We're here on pretty standard business. There's nothing that's going to be aggressive about this. Yeah. We don't need to rough anybody up just yet. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> this all right. isn't your home invasion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Homeless invasion? Yeah. <laughs> Just, uh, just, 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 uh, just, just um, put her in a chokehold while I break her jaw. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you do knock on the door, and uh, no one responds. But the storage room door does open, and a five foot one, five foot two woman with dreadlocks and kind of overall steps out of it and looks at you. Are you here to see Polly? Ah, uh, yes. Thank you. She's oh, out yes. for a couple minutes. Uh, I, I'm Flower. I'm her assistant. Oh, it's nice to meet you, Flower. Good to meet you, Flower. So we are here because we heard some situations occurring with um, disappearances. Uh, we're here to help. Yeah, it's been a super bummer, man. Uh, we, we thought for a couple weeks that like maybe they were finding places to go or they were leaving the city or something and then some of the residents upstairs started complaining about stuff and then we were out in kind of the field you know doing the good work giving people some food and stuff like that and uh, they were asking us if we'd seen them at the other camps or something and uh, yeah it, it's been strange uh, they're, they're homeless so they kind of uh, they do wander off occasionally for lack of a better phrase but yeah, man, it's... What's your interest in it, I guess? Oh, well, we're just we're just reporters. Right on, right on. Um, actually, I just had a question, some questions about your operation uh, while I wait for um, uh, Polly Gare. Is that all right with you? Right, yeah, sure. I, c- I can answer what I can. Uh, Polly does most of the work. I'm just kind of here to help her load the van and hand out the food when we get out there and stuff like that, and... Just watch your back, but yeah, I can answer some questions while you're while waiting on her. Well, you know, I just want to let you know that I appreciate the good work you're doing here. Glad someone does. Uh, a lot of the residents over at the housing community aren't big fans of us. Oh, the the ones that um, out of oh the peak gated community is the name Thank you're looking you. for. Yep, the peak. Yeah, I hear I hear those guys really really lobbied against you. And the other homeless shelters. Yeah, they tried even getting the funding cut for the shelter here. Uh, uh, we can't prove it, but we're pretty sure they paid a developer to look into like turning this place into like a apartment complex or something. They had to knock the entire building down and build something up. But uh, it got stopped, obviously. Uh, uh, the town's getting better, I guess, but also like no one's moving here that wants something that big made. Like we have a hard enough problem filling what we got. Uh, you, you from Chicago originally? Uh, no, actually, I'm a I'm a West Coaster myself. 
Right on, Los right Angeles. on. Los Angeles myself. And I totally understand. Uh, there's a lot of issues with homelessness in LA. And, you know, it's one of those things where the the people who have never really look after or really care for the people who don't. And when all of a sudden they see uh, any kind of modicum of assistance or that help, uh, you know how they are. Um, the, those, those things that, uh, the complaints that the, uh, unhoused are, uh, talking about I, on our way down here, there was someone complaining about a buzzing. Is that a, uh, is that a widespread complaint or is that just kind of the something happening to that specific individual? I that's probably Mac. He's been going through some stuff. Uh, man, I don't know. A couple of the, a couple, I guess the people we talked with the camps kind of like people like Spud and stuff. They've, they've been talking about here. I got how the buzzing happens before some of the people vanish or something. Uh, I personally think they're crazy. Uh, people hear all kinds of weird things and they're cracked out on shit, but it, they, they keep saying it though, which is real strange. Um, I know Paulie did some investigation to that or something, I guess. Uh, I don't know much, sadly, though. Uh, Have there been any other kinds of uh, you know, complaints recently that seem just kind of odd? Uh, from the homeless or from other people in town? Yeah, from the from the homeless. Uh, I mean, aside for their friends vanishing and the fact that they've basically all moved from the warehouse area and Parkview to the runoff, like there's a big overcrowding problem, fights are up, stealing's up, uh, it's kind of crime, if you want to call a homeless person attacking another person in the camp over something, crime, I guess, is up in the homeless camps. They're like, wouldn't call them peaceful. There's a lot of mental illness there that causes all kinds of irrational behavior, but yeah, it's, it's, it's been a bit of a problem lately, I guess. Why are they, why are they leaving the um, park view? I hear it's a ghost town these days. Yeah, we don't know. They won't, I, they claim something's bad happened. They claim like that's where the buzzing started. And I don't know, like they, they won't talk about the warehouse at all, or maybe it's more, yeah, so what happens used to happen is kind of a triangle. People would move around from camp to camp and back and forth some as they needed as they saw fit. Like the warehouse was the biggest kind of covered space you could be in. It was the best. It was the in down the old industrial district. And those buildings you could camp out in and stuff like that. Like as far as things go for Chicago, not a bad place to be during the winter and all that. And the park view was probably the nicest place to be during the summer. Nicest views, lots of open air, You're on top of a hill, like there's that, and then there's the runoff, which I, it's it's just the runoff. It's down kind of where, where some of the storm management stuff is. It's called the runoff because the water literally runs off there into some waste management stuff, like towards the lake and stuff. It's not supposed to be the biggest camp, and it definitely is right now. And almost no one will go to Parkview right now. Maybe that's like maybe that bitch Vicky finally got her way, but it was Vicky. She's the biggest Karen of uh, the peak. Is, is, what is is Vicky kind of is a resident of the peak, or is she like part of Neighborhood Watch, or what? Who is Vicky? Like, what I, is? Vicky I, the peak? I, I think she lives there. I I don't know the details. When she just starts talking, like my. It's just all bad vibes and shrill sounds. Like she has the personality of someone tuning a guitar that's really bad at it, and the strings are made of like yowling cats. Just being around her harsh is my vibe, man. Gotcha. Uh, do you mind? You, you said the 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 person who said who was talking about the buzzing. That's his name was Mac. No, that Max the one probably upstairs. Spud, he's kind of so each of the camp has like a, a leader unofficially, like they used to, I guess. And Spud's the guy in charge of the runoff. He's been there for years. Uh, real tragic story, like a war veteran or something. I think uh, nice enough guy. Uh, we've tried to help him out a couple times. But he kind of feels like he has to stay at this one. He could totally move out if he wanted to. He just kind of chooses to stay for some reason. Gotcha, gotcha. Do you mind if I talk to Spud 
It's sure you'd have to go there and find them. He's not here. Uh, oh, everyone gets oh, kicked gotcha. out during the day because, well, they have to clean up and stuff like that. We only kind of let the people that are a little more hard to extract or maybe not medically safe to extract stay during the day. That's also we we don't make the rules here either. We're just kind of lucky enough to get space out of them. All right, we're gonna jump back to the CDC and you've been working away over some hut kind of weirdly solidifying organs there, Francis. What are you looking for, I guess? Like, you're trying to, like, you've been trying to figure out how ways to cool this or stop this stuff from kind of hardening up more, correct? Yes. All right. Um, what are your sciences again? Uh, biology at 50, genetics at 50, and microbiology at 90. All right. So we're going to use biology again. Give me a biology roll at plus 20. Uh, three out of 70. Perfect. Nice. Yeah. So. Going back to kind of like this resin, like to comparison, heat does seem to reverse the solidification process. Some cold seems to stop it. Like it's not; it doesn't seem to be kind of reacted to environments. Like cold definitely slows it down, if not stops it. Heat reverses the process some, and once the process is reversed, it doesn't seem to kind of start creeping back on itself. It's not moving fast either. You're not like watching it solidify before your eyes; more just. You were kind of realizing it's going on, and let's do a microbiology check on this one. Sure. Nine out of 90. Nice. Yeah, so you're looking at slides through all of this, and what you're seeing, actually, under the kind of microscope is, so this is not, like, where the word icker is misleading. This is kind of almost like a, this is this is definitely a disease of some kind or kind of like an after effect of a disease that's causing this to happen. And I, the more you're looking at this, like it's not a very powerful disease, but like if someone was already sick or kind of undernourished or something, it could be quite dangerous. Like or if they were already in the process of dying or something, this could definitely impact them. Like if their body was in the process of shutting down or something, this could be a real thing. It definitely appears to be converting the cells it's encountering kind of like a cancer almost into this weird hardened stuff. And as you've been digging around in this morning, you've kind of cut the sample up into some more chunks. You realize this is working from like the inside out. So the innermost chunks of these organs are much more like this. And they've actually even almost taken on like not a glass like quality, but almost like a plastic like quality to them. Like they're almost semi translucent. Like, and it is kind of slowly working its way out. You might describe it as like watching something freeze in water from like the center of a volume of water to the outside edges. That's what appears to be going on. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah. Then I guess her next step is to to try to figure out like what's the quickest way to kill this disease if uh, if at all possible. Sure. Uh, I'm trying to think of what check that would be. Now you got the microbiology stuff. So yeah, again. It does not like heat. It really seems that almost just kind of anything that boosts the immune system, you'd guess. Like it's it's very not aggressive. Like it definitely seems to be capitalizing on the fact that what tissue sample you have that aren't infected are in pretty rough shape. Like just looking at kind of on a from a biological standpoint, from a medical standpoint, this was probably a drug addict who slept out in the cold constantly. Like it, it's a real tragic human being, and it's probably why it's going this way. But like. People that have that are immunocompromised or something, like people recovering from a disease, this could also impact them. But like any kind of level of a fully functioning immune system, is probably enough to force this out of your system eventually, in a okay. relatively how, short manner. How um, uh, how uh, what's the word? Um, how easily does it look to spread? It doesn't appear to spread via airborne like it definitely seems to be traveling looking at it, it's definitely kind of a, it seems to have attached to infected or basic cells it's infecting that way like it definitely is a spreading via cells on contact not kind of and again it's much spreading out it's not like moving throughout the organs at random intervals it's very much kind of like from a central node almost moving outwards like it's not kind of it's not behaving like a virus would where it would kind of go wherever the weakest point is it's very much kind of a evolution out of that mix it's like a central point kind of explosion out of the disease it's not moving rapidly it's moving consistently like it's it's yeah. almost like it's kind of converting like percentages and then moving on or it's not like 
it's not trying to infect the entire thing at once. It's trying to infect consistently throughout. Um, uh, I just got two more questions. Sure. Uh, so, uh, how contagious would Nefli think this would be? Would it be through like bodily fluids, sharing needles? Bodily um, fluids potentially, needles potentially, but you're pretty confident that it's not going to go airborne again. Like you probably have to, you you probably have to inject it or kind of get it past your basic just kind of skin wall in some way to get the to get it there. I guess like it could it it might be an STD, but like it might also just like what people don't know is they pass diseases back and forth that way all the time too. With the common cold can transfer. Yeah. it's got that kind of same potentiality there. But again. It really does look like it wouldn't even infect. It might make you sick for a couple of days if you weren't immune compromised. Yeah. But if you were, it could be a real problem. And does this resemble any type of disease that, she, in any way, that she would know about? Like a mutation of one, or is this completely new? It seems relatively new. I'm sure there's some diseases out there that do a hardening of organ things. I just didn't think to look up when I was prepping for this, but. Yeah, like this is kind of unique, and it's not it's, its own thing. It definitely seems to be its own thing. I would say though that it doesn't behave like a disease. It almost seems to behave like an infection or like a venom or something like that. Like it's it defies any disease like logic. So I was gonna go and present this like whatever I overheard to Florence, yeah. but it looks like you're already kind of doing that. No, she's fine. You're she's gonna. You're confirming the same things, I guess. Like it's, okay. it's an investigation. Like the fact that uh, the fact that other people are catching this and kind of shrugging it off. That's the thing. Gotcha. Yes, yeah, so I assume you kind of fill her in on the details of yeah. the CDC is aware of the infections going around. It's not just the assumption is this was probably a homeless person. That's what at least Delta Greens assumed so far. Other people are getting sick with it, hypothetically. Mm. Yeah. So I just go back and report all these findings. Yeah. Like, and say this is what I overheard for the most part. And mention, like, they said something about mosquitoes, maybe. Like, it's just kind of what I overheard briefly. So, do with that what you will. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm about done here. Well, so remember, you got that one chunk. That's like someone sliced off a chunk of someone's neck. Oh, yeah. I still need to look at that. I'm going to put in a request as well to get um, uh, all the files and information they have on this what they're calling well, well what you found what they think is going on and see if uh there's any indicators that'll sure. help us but um first i'm gonna finish looking at this unfortunate soul's neck do you want to help out with this at all agent foxtrot like you're not a doctor but you're good at stabbing people yeah and i wanted to kind of actually i was gonna say like can i take a look at that wound and see exactly what kind of like See if it's like some sort of like, well, just kind of get an idea of what kind of wound that was, like whether like it was actually like an attack or if it was like done pre or post almost, like yeah, like pre death, post death kind of thing. Do you so, have a forensic well, skill? Um, no, I don't. What are your skills? Do you have? I guess that'd be related to investigating a body, hypothetically. Huh. So the only thing I would say that kind of would make sense would be, like, I've seen combat wounds and, like, unarmed combat. How and... high is your also? How high is your unarmed combat, and how high is your firearms, actually? My firearms is at 80, and my unarmed combat is at 60. Alright, so... so I'm, and I'm attuned to violence, so I've seen my fair share of wounds and mutilations in, like, out in my job, so I could... If it was something that was caused, like, through violent means, or like an attack of sorts, I can identify it. So I was going to say, so give me a firearms check on this. All right. So out of 80, I rolled a 37. It makes absolutely no sense. But if you had to guess, it looks like the initial wound here, the wound is kind of, it's, it's bigger than this would be, but it sure looks like someone got shot in the back of the neck with a bow and arrow. Hmm. Okay, so, uh, hey, uh, Doc, I I know I'm not a not a egghead or you know doctor type, but I do know uh, combat wounds. And you look right here. This looks like this was done with an arrowhead from 
some sort of bow and arrow type weapon. Could be a crossbow, could be a bow and arrow, but this was done with the tip of an arrowhead. Okay. Hmm. Qu- question. How big is the wound? Like, it, are we talking small arrowhead, like a thin needle-ish kind of thing, or something larger? The wound is too big for an arrowhead, but just kind of like based off the shape of it, it mm. they got stabbed with something. But like stabbing is okay. a certain kind of angle and velocity, and this is definitely like something sharp flew into that person's neck. Okay. It's gotten a little bit bigger, kind of like something maybe like wrenched it open or something like that. But that sounds like a search of some kind from one of you. So okay. you kind of bend over and look at it. I'll I'll do a search on that since I was already investigating that. Yeah, Could I assist in any way. Yeah, no, okay. no need. So yeah, so you look here like this looks like this. Yeah, like some sort of sharp stabbing here, but you can see it went in a certain angle, and it looks bigger now because it might have been kind of either you know between now and when it was done, maybe the flesh was tampered with or adjusted, maybe in movement, but this was definitely done with some sort of sharp either blade or weapon. Like I said, could have been arrowhead, could have been a blade itself, but something was definitely stabbed in there. I I've seen one too many uh blade wounds not to uh not to ignore that one. All right, so, and kind of, if you're looking over this, maybe you're shining a flashlight in there or something, mm-hmm. and you see something. It's really deep in there, though. It's like maybe it's wrapped around the chunk of bone or something, but you see kind of almost like a maybe piece of yarn or a piece of cable or something wrapped around in there. You'd have to kind of either pull the skin open more or kind of try and fish it out or something like that with a pair of tweezers. Mm. So I turn over to Dr. Morris and say, Hey, uh, Doc, you, uh... There's something in there. You might want to take a gander. Uh, yeah, she'll take a look. Yeah, so I'll hold a flashlight or hold whatever light I can do to assist. But yeah. this is obviously out of my my field of expertise, so I'll let the experts do their thing. Do you have surgery, Florence, or no? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. But she does have medicine. All right. Yeah. Let's, um, what's your medicine at? Fifty-one. Okay. Yeah. Give me a roll on that. 92 out of 51 failure. Yeah, so you're, you're not a surgeon, you're a biologist and stuff like that, so you kind of, you're not perfect at pulling this thing out, and maybe you mess up the sample a little bit as getting it out, but so you kind of get some tweezers in, you cut back the skin some, and you reveal what almost looks like a dragonfly of some kind, with several legs just kind of wrapped around the column of the spine, and kind of like, almost like a what's the right phrase, like almost like a uh, a mosquito like beak just right into the kind of one of the gaps between the two spinal things, right through the kind of what the discs, I guess, whatever's between the discs, the uh, marrow or something. The oh. cushions there. And mm-hmm. it's it's not small. This isn't a small bug. It's about the size of like a baseball or something all said and done. Like the wings, if they were unfurled, would probably be like end to end, it'd probably be about a ah, foot long, maybe a little bit bigger kind of thing. Okay. It definitely appears to be dead though, and it's Bugs aren't this big. No, <laughs> this is creepy as fuck. So uh, and, and I guess, like to kind of further add to it, it's definitely kind of wrapped and like maybe trying to like. Actually, give me a search on this one. Nine out of forty-four. Success. So all of its legs, actually, as much as they're wrapped, they're also like going into the various gaps between the spine, into the spinal column, and stuff like that. This thing is very much kind of like implanted itself on the spine, and kind of underneath all of this, there is a sack of some kind on the bottom of this bug. Um, well, uh, it's time to move this to one of those, like, uh, I forget what they're called, but it's one of those cases where you, like, have gloves that are Yeah, with the gloves? Yeah. yeah. Uh, move this to that. Um, <laughs> and uh, Florence will go about trying to figure out what's in that sack. Yeah. All right, cool. So you get that stuff in there. Like it's, it's dead. Like it's not going to spring at you or anything. So you're going to cut into the sack. Yeah. All right. So you kind of cut through, you're wearing the gloves, the kind of cage things, you're all protected from it. And just this milky green liquid comes pouring out of the sack. The things about the size of a baseball, probably like a cup or so of this liquid. Like you're realizing that most of this bug's body 
is this liquid. And now that you're seeing the liquid. The liquid sure as hell looks like the more crystallized parts of the organs you were looking at. I want to, uh, and this is going to sound weird, but I want to take a quick, like, sniff of it to see if it's, like, gangrene or rot or something. Kind of like, <laughs> like, if it's something like so You're going like to open that. the containment thing to smell the bug liquid. Oh, wait, 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 no, no, wait. wait. Well, the, ooh, the, the stuff that's oozing out of it should be coming out of the person, right? No, it's not. Oh, never mind. I thought it was coming out of the person. I no. <laughs> no, I'm good. Never mind. Ignore me. I'm not sniffing anything. <laughs> Fucking do an ectoplasm with it. It's just like... <laughs> That's some good ectoplasm. Hey, look. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I gotta get my high somewhere. Uh, <laughs> so, whip. I got this corpse. Yeah, Florence is gonna get a sample of the liquid. Yeah actually a pretty big one uh, and take a couple of them in case she's got to destroy the samples for any reason sure. uh, and then basically cut the bug up and make it into smaller samples as well that uh yeah because this thing's strange uh is there any way that after examining the bug that she could figure out how it would have been able to like bore into the skin to get to the spine definitely or you can kind of get that in a couple songs we're gonna jump back to the homeless shelter though to Break this one up a little bit. So yeah, we're going back to the homeless shelter. Uh, some time has passed. Polly Gear has arrived. She kind of was surprised you two were standing down there with uh, with Flower. She kind of looks at you. She is uh, kind of thirty year old woman, maybe a little closer to forty. Uh, red hair, kind of dressed in jean jacket, very much kind of the typical homeless kind of helper person. If that makes any sense, looks at you two confused. Uh. Did I have an appointment with you two I forgot about or something? It it happens a lot. We're kind of out in the field and I forget stuff. Oh no, we, we just dropped by to uh just uh, just ask you a couple questions, actually. Questions about what? Uh well about the um the recent sort of homeless disappearances. Someone send you? Like you you looking for someone or something like that? We've had some concerned families come through lately and I'm going to tell you what I tell all them. Uh, not much I can do. I can't make your family come home. No. Um, I'm a reporter. Just trying to do some some light digging into this. I know your guys' organization does a lot of good. So I, I know you work closely with them, so I didn't know if you had any. This like a public interest piece or something? Like, I, Which paper are you with? Uh, so he's actually with me. I work for the um, Archdiocese of LA, and we've been hearing a couple things uh, that has been affecting uh, multiple states. So this is happening in Los Angeles, this is happening uh, in New York, this is happening in Chicago. Um, so I kind of am here for a bit of a humanitarian effort, at least just with uh, unhoused uh, metropolitan uh, folk, and so he's here with the um, uh, newsletter that the church kind of passes around. We're not here to um, try to promote anything or have any kind of um, agenda. It's more so just like here's how uh, local uh, churchgoers can assist their community and whatnot. What's your Christmas score again? My charisma score is a 10, but I've got a really decent Persuade. All right, yeah, see that Persuade? I was going to give you a plus 10 if your charisma is high enough, but yeah, let's do a straight Persuade. Uh, that is a hella failure with an 87 out of 40. She kind of looks at you skeptically. Uh-huh. Priest from L.A. coming all the way to Chicago to talk to me about the vanishing homeless in a small part of the city when... I can't even get the local clergy to give a rat's ass about these people. All right, all right. Sure. So, listen, all right. Let's uh, let's let's go with the truth. I'll pull I'll pull out my badge, and I'll show it to her. Oh shit! Uh, yeah, this is this is. Uh, I didn't want to attract a lot of attention. I'm just we're just we believe these disappearances are a um, sort of a multi-state thing. It's like a human trafficking thing or something. Could be. In the early stages, 
still, we're still in the early stages. We I don't want to I don't want to make any uh, you know any uh, wild guesses. I just uh you know my my local contact pointed me to you, so you you know you work closely with the uh, with the po- the population here, and you know um, I believe you 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 had some personal relationships, or at least knew some of them some of them who have disappeared. Is that is that right? Uh yeah yeah hold on a second. She kind of looks at uh Agent Faustus. You pretended to be a priest, you motherfucker. I am what a kind priest. of sick man pretends to be a priest. You're a priest. You a federal priest? I told him it was a bad idea. He thinks it's funny. We're sorry. Like, he... the hell is wrong with you people? Being a priest used to mean something. Ah, God. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry. That just that struck me as extra strange. Um, yeah. No, we we've had some disappearances. Uh, not much we can do. We're kind of more involved in the making sure they get medicine and food when they can't get it and stuff like that. And trying to help them advocate for themselves and not lose what little land they have that they can camp out on to stuff. Uh, yes. Yeah, so sorry about the third degree earlier that uh, I-, I was worried you were PIs hired again by that Vicky bitch. God, is she a, she's the worst. Yeah. Um, Fla- um your assistant, uh, Miss flowers mentioned something about her. What she's hiring PIs. What for what? Oh, did she mention Vicky? Uh, yeah. Yeah. She's some, um... Board housewife up at the housing complex that just I, I I don't know exactly what happened. Like I think maybe like someone was in the neighborhood at one point or something like that. And it's been that woman's like one person war to just get the police there every goddamn time that homeless camp near them used to pop up and it just just made our lives hell. Like we've had several lawsuits brought against us. Like I. She alleged I like I, she got me arrested once for like selling drugs. I was giving people aspirin, but I, yeah, she's she's absolutely the worst kind of human. Well, it sounds like you have had a lot of run-ins with them. If I don't hear something from Vicky at least once a week, I assume she's dead, and I'm <laughs> thankful for that to happen. Yeah, like the, the last thing that happened was like they weren't PIs, but she literally hired a bunch of kids to follow us around our route. Like we, we had to pull over and confront them. They're like, we were paying, getting paid by that lady. I, we thought they were going to kidnap us or something. And she does weird shit like that all the time. Like I, I, I think I started like maybe putting rat poison in food once there or something. She's a terrible person. Jesus. Isn't poisoning a federal. <laughs> oh, geez, Louise. Um, but yeah, if anything else, if you could just kind of supply us with a little bit more information on some of these disappearances, is there been like when is the most when has been the most recent one? If you if it, as as far as you can tell, uh, she kind of sighs. Uh, come into my office. Sorry, I, I got some notes that maybe will help you out. But like, I, if I'm being blunt, like there's a homeless problem here. I don't know everyone that even comes through the shelter here, and well, we work here, kind of thing. I can't keep track of everyone, and I have to like, I, I only know people are missing when someone comes up to me asking if they've seen me at one of the other camps. And sometimes I have, sometimes I haven't. But more and more so lately, like we, we just stopped going more or less to Parkview. Maybe there's one or two people there. Like, I, it's terrible, but this kind of weird consolidation of the runoff has made our trips way easier and their lives way worse. Like, I've been to the warehouse a couple times. We like people would even come to the car anymore for some weird reason. They're even out of the building with some frequency. We see a couple of them and they're not looking good. But I don't know, maybe I got into the water supply there or something. Like, it's an industrial yard. It's probably been bad. They've been there for a long time anyway. Yeah, she unlocks not... her door, kind of leads you in. It's just a stack of papers and boxes. Like, it's not a good office, but it's a box. It's an office of someone who works hard at what they do kind of thing. And she's like, uh, yeah, uh, that box there and that box there probably is what you're looking for. Uh, we start taking some notes, but if I'm being honest, it's not our mission to try and help people find people. It's just to try and keep them fed. I, could, I completely understand. I just... I... um. You know, I appreciate your help. Um, you said that the yard, there are people that were looking kind of sick. Kind of looks at you. Dude, if if I'm being honest, father, if that's what you actually are, I, they're homeless. 
all of them have something wrong with them, whether it's physically, mentally, or a combination of both. The living on the streets in Chicago. We lose people every year to just fall happening and getting too cold at night by all of a sudden. Like people freeze to death in this town they get run over by cars or run over by snow plows. Exposure is a real thing. The wind chills a real thing. Pneumonia cases are through the roof just because it's a wet city for a big chunk of the year. Under, understood. Understood. It's a bad place to be homeless, unlike California, where it's warm most of the year. Well, you know, major cities, most people are going to be traveling to these just because of social services. But I understand. I understand. Different, different difficulties uh, per city. Uh, yeah, I, I take, a, take a look at the notes. I can not take them with me because we do try and maintain some level of confidentiality, I guess. But... If anything bleeps out, you want to take it, just let me know, I guess, and maybe we can talk. Do you mind if I take f- pictures of these in terms of my a real quick photocopy? Give me a persuade on that one. Here we go with my 40 persuade again. I thought that was a decent stat, but apparently not. Okay, <laughs> can, I, can I double check it? Can I just like update it and check it? Unfortunately, <laughs> no. <Ugh. laughs> Uh, she kind of looks at you. She's like, uh, "I'm not super comfortable with that." Like, I, you want to take a picture of like one or two of them, maybe leap out at you as especially noteworthy. Like, if there's something that listens to the case, fine. But I, I don't want you just taking pictures of random people's names and stuff like that. Like, we these people. We, we t- it took us a long time to get these people to trust us. It's been a I'm, long slog understood. uphill. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you'll get to get a subpoenaed, of course. Yeah. You gotta do what you gotta do, Copper. Alright, we'll just take a, we'll just take a few minutes to leave through this, see if anything that comes out. Yeah, yeah, and you can take it out to the you can take it out of the office too and leave through it. You just want to leave the premises, I guess. Like you can also try and be stealthy and take pictures against her if you want. <laughs> totally a thing you can do. But yeah, so you're gonna start going through the paperwork? Yeah, yeah. It's gotta take some time. Do we run a search or like an alertness? That's a bureaucracy. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What about an accounting check? Um, let's see how the bureaucracy goes first. Let you both roll it. <laughs> bureaucracy of ten percent. Let's roll, baby. Eighty-nine. Fucking eight. Oh no, my bureaucracy's failed me. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, to be kind like they are kind of official notes and requests but they also are with some frequency kind of not the best filled out ones a lot of discrepancies across the forms that make following this quite confusing how do you want to use the accounting in this i guess like you're trying to see a pattern or something like that like uh, what's the logic of accounting being worked into this because accounting is much more financially based than that but i will kind of if you're saying it's like a math approach, if you're just trying to get like a quantity or see a pattern of some kind, I could see that working hypothetically. Yeah, I mean, I, I, assume, I assume they're also keeping records of, you know, the donations, um, the amount of food served, that kind of, that kind of work. Uh, sure, yeah, and this is, this is just kind of just notes on, this is more just notes they've picked up from people looking for people or that stuff. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll let you do an accounting rule on this. It probably won't get you the answers you're looking for, but it might give you some numbers or something like that at least you can maybe use to help push this along damn it <laughs> uh apparently it doesn't yeah. handler handler can i actually can i use my military science on this in the sense of understanding uh movement of people um kind of in this kind of in the idea of like where people are dropping off um like there's the last known locations of specific folk Checking in at... Okay, yeah, actually. What's your military science, Zach? I might just give this to you. My military science is at 60%. I will just give this to you, yeah. That's oh, yes. enough to kind of pick up what I'm going to give nice. you on this one. So, yeah, so... Based on kind of your time in various war zones and stuff, yeah, people like this are traditionally nomadic, and the fact that they are risking overpopulation and kind of the violence that comes with that overpopulation to not be two other locations that historically have been good locations for them is mm-hmm. a pretty big deal. And the fact that uh, Polly said that there are people at the warehouse, they've just completely changed their behavior. They won't engage with them anymore. And it, like, it's 
that's strange, but also the fact that there's not this kind of circulation going on. The fact that the warehouse people seem to be just the warehouse people now, and no one's leaving there to go back to the other two, that's also strange. Yeah, like that, that speaks to something about there is holding them there. Maybe they have a resource there, they don't have other places. Like that, that's a reason to stay that the other two don't. And the fact that of the three, the most kind of seasonally appropriate one, which is Parkview, is completely abandoned. That's weird. Like when, May, Parkview, uh, when Parkview was um, where it was understood as the better place to be, it's of the three, it's the nicest. Okay, and like it, you're getting towards summer, which means people in theory be moving there because it gets warm and you want kind of the airflow and stuff. Like mm-hmm. the runoff is kind of gross, but it's kind of neutral year round. The warehouse is really good for the winter and stuff like that, but probably not that great once it gets you know warm out. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, I'll definitely give you military science on kind of that understanding of that. Yeah, it's... Sweet. Yeah, there's definitely something off about all of this. It, it won't help you kind of figure out what's going on with the people where they're getting snatched necessarily, but I, I would probably say it does suggest at least that a good place to go check out might be Parkview. And at the same time, I'll also kind of like fill in the gap of it really sounds like you should go talk to that woman that's been making these people's lives hard, Vicky. Yeah. Uh, so, Francis, just looking at these um, traveling patterns of just the residents uh, of the shelter, it's looking like, I mean, it's just weird, the fact that Parkview has just been abandoned, even though that's probably strategically the best place to be. Um, and those who enter the warehouse are just kind of staying at the warehouse. Uh, two points of interest, at least. Uh, we probably should check out what's going on. Uh, what's going on with Parkview for sure, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, something is something is definitely going on with these locations. It's it's got to be more than just you know the weather. Probably could also talk to Vicky see whether or not. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. we should we should definitely investigate these camps before we talk to her. Um. Yeah. Yeah. You have Florence's contact number. We can kind of shoot her the information that we found out. See what she's kind of found on her own. Uh, and she's with Fox John, Jones. right? Should we uh should we talk to one of the talk to one of the um the residents here? I'm still kind of intrigued by the whole buzzing sort of situation. I mean we could talk to that person or we could talk to that person if they're still upstairs. Yeah, if you want to take the lead, I'll let you I'll let you, I'll let you, I'll let you uh we'll talk to him. All right. Hey, Polly, thank you for giving us access to this, by the way. Yeah, sure. I I wasn't expecting, you know, the marshals to show up with an interest in this. They're, they're, they're homeless. Most people like to forget they even exist. Uh, yeah, if you can figure out what's going on, I guess that'd be awesome. I, yeah, it, it also could just be a bunch of people got sick and disease spreads like wildfire through those camps occasionally. It's fucking tragic, but... It happens. Also, as as I said, um, we're in the we're in the very early stages of this uh, this investigation, so I I prefer if you not to mention. I don't want to tip anyone off, of course. Yeah, sure. Give me a persuade on that though, too. I'll give you a plus twenty on that. God damn it, dude. Hey. Yeah, sure, whatever, officer. Uh, yeah, yeah. So Flower comes over and gives you like a, both a big hug. May the spirits guide you on this journey of righteousness. I know you're here under duplicitous means, but you're doing something good. Kind of Polly grabs her. It's like, D- don't, don't do that. <laughs> I'm not too fond of patchouli. I'm sorry. I don't really quite like hugs. Yeah. So we're going to jump back to the lab. Now we're going back to the CDC with our uh, scientists, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Agent Foxtrot, the scientist. Yes, renowned scientist, and I guess uh, sniffer, wet work yeah. operative. Yeah, yeah. I took scientist in college. He's a man of <laughs> science and extreme violence. <laughs> but yeah, as long as you write it uh, down. Yeah. All right. So you've been investigating the bug and how it kind of caused the cut in the back of the neck, correct? Uh, yeah. Uh, hey, John, can you do me a favor when you get a free moment? 
Sure. What do you need? Do you mind running the target and buying a bunch of different bug repellents um, and get me a turtleneck, a medium? <laughs> I get the bug spray, but, uh, turtleneck? Well, yeah, I'm gonna see if the bug spray is, uh, all corrosive to these things, and if it is, I'm gonna wear the turtleneck and put the bug spray on the turtleneck. Get in one of those dog things that, like, they, they wear so they stop themselves from biting themselves. I was especially put one of those, like, uh, the neck braces you probably have, like, neck injuries, the hard plastic ones <laughs> or something. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you're a weird broad, but sure, whatever, I guess. I'll be back. Shall so, I like, produce a hundred for you? Yeah, all right, so I take the hundred, and then I'll, uh... You're gonna be all right here by yourself for a little bit? I hope so. All right, um... All right, well, then I'll be back. So, I, uh... I guess I'll head out and... Head out to the closest target. <laughs> yeah. We'll handle that in a second. So, uh, so how are you trying to figure out what caused the cut? I guess Florence, like you got to try and pull the bug off the spine. What's the plan? Um, yeah, I think uh, what she's gonna do is um, she'll cut one of the legs off uh, and see if um, uh, there's any way that 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 could have done it, uh, and see if it's got a stinger, kind of like a mosquito or anything like that. Sure. So, uh, yeah, I won't make a roll for that even. Like, so you feel like, so you, you, you come with the legs off, and the legs are much more grasped, they even end like a small hook of some kind, but definitely there's like this thing extending into, like, the hook goes into the soft tissue between the vertebra, and it's hard to get off, kind of thing. And uh, give me a strength check on this. Oh. <laughs> 88 fumble. All right, so you managed to get it off, but in the process, like it's it's really on there. When you start pulling at it, it slowly but surely starts moving, and you're doing this in the kind of the fume hood thing, right? That you you have the yeah, gloves yeah. on and still. So all of a sudden, the thing just gives way, and there's a beak on this thing. It's surprisingly long. It's it, it, it basically where you were expecting to kind of be like a needle of some kind. It is. But it's also almost like a bird beak where it kind of it comes out and you're realizing that this thing's mouth, beak, stinger, whatever the right word is for it, was going in between the spinal between the spinal column of things and then up along the kind of inside of that column as it pulls out. It's like three, four inches long of this. and It's razor sharp to the point where it actually cuts one of the gloves that you're kind of putting your hands through all the way down to your skin. You're going to take one point of damage off that. Oh, fuck. Uh, yeah, she immediately, like, goes to sterilizing. Yep. Um, she t- ties, like, um, uh, a tight tourniquet at the top of her, her her shoulder, actually, while she's sterilizing. Rip Florence. Once she's got, like, alcohol and everything on it, she uh, starts to, to transfer the stuff into another... Um, another hood yeah no it's just kind of it's a it's a deep cut on your hand but nothing it's dead like it's didn't impart anything on you but yeah no it's this thing's definitely dangerous and uh, do you have friends by any chance uh no what non i guess science-based sciences might you have that you could kind of look at and kind of make a hypothesis like do you have physics by any chance or anything like that um no, uh, I've got like I said, it's it, genetics is the only one that's a, what kind of. I mean, that yeah. is still biology, but uh, I have. Let's see. Uh, I don't think I actually have anything that would would really apply, um, other than like doing a computer search. To, let's just do an int on this, I guess. Then, okay, an intelligence check. 22 critical success. Yeah, so you feel pretty confident that this thing's nose, beak, whatever the right phrase is for it, is 100% sharp enough. If it wanted to kind of plunge cut through the back of someone's neck, it absolutely could. Okay. Alright, cool. And while we're doing this, uh, give me a constitution check. Yeah, figured. 
53 out of 50 fail. Now give me a POW check. 41 out of 85 success. All right, so you feel kind of woozy for a second and managed to lower yourself into a chair, but you, you felt like for a split second that you might were going to pass out or something, uh, but you got your bit dizzy and kind of thrown off the time. You feel nauseated for a split second there. Maybe it's the cut. Maybe there was something that got passed on to you from the cut. Who knows? Who knows? 